So <clears throat> I've certainly been trained on this over the years. Um, I now actually teach about gang graffiti and recognizing gang graffiti versus tagging of another kind. Um, and in most cases, the way I explain it is gangs tagging is usually not as subtle as other types of tagging. Gangs generally want the tagging to be clear as to what it is. And this photo that we were using as an example of rock gang tag tagging as you can see, ROC is spelled out very clearly. Um, they've got very clearly the red five-point star. Um, it says blood down at the bottom. And it also says, excuse the language, fuck crip. Um, none of those things are masked or hidden in that meeting. And, and most gang graffiti is of this type. There are really two things that I, um, that I look for to determine whether something is potentially going to be gang graffiti. And one is the content, um, which as I've said, is usually fairly clear. But what does the graffiti actually say, or what is it actually an image of? Is it an image or, bless you, is it an image or language directly related to a specific gang? The other is um, the context. Where is it? Gangs typically tag their own territory to assert their dominance or their control over a particular area, or they may potentially tag in a rival's territory in order to disrespect the rival gang, which can sometimes begin a violent back and forth. Um, while gangs could potentially tag in other areas, usually that's what we're going to see. So I regularly get sent pictures of graffiti to review for possible gang affiliation. That's sort of the first two filters that I put it through. And generally, we're able to discern what it is using that technique. Now, the area that is depicted on the screen, currently labeled gang tagging, you said that it's generally in an area occupied by the gang. And this particular area. Section to repeating the direct homeworld. Would you please tell the jury what area it is that is depicted in this particular uh, image? Uh, this intersection is the intersection of Mount Zion Road and Habel Road, which is in that Cleveland Avenue corridor. 
Now, when we're talking about gay clothing, if you can go to the next slide. I've, I've collected the Okay. As we're talking about gay clothing, looking at slide here now, would you tell the jury what it is that you've seen during your time as an investigator and the significance that it holds for you? So we began seeing Rock Crew gang members wearing these particular shirts that they had made. Um, obviously, it says very large on the front of it, it says, So What We Blooded. And this was the first really public statement that I recall for one of our local gangs making this big, bold statement that they were associated with a national or traditional gang. And they were wearing these, obviously, quite publicly. You notice on the back of it, it says Red Cartel and uh, Creek City Records and Rock Gang. Um, those three crews that I mentioned earlier. And the, the words, so what we blooded, there's actually also the title of a song um, that was published by some members of Red Cartel as well about their blood gang affiliation. Is there significance to the fact that there's this abundance of red on both shirts? There is, actually, this is the front and back of one shirt. I want to make sure that's clear. Um, but the shirt is obviously in red. That color is associated with Bloods Street Gangs or gangs that associate with the Bloods. Now, you mentioned that that was a song that was published by a member of Red Cartel. Is Red Cartel a record label? Um, I don't believe Red Cartel was ever actually a, a record label, but I, I don't know that for sure. Okay. Was Red Cartel a Colonel Street Gang? Yes, ma'am. Now, is... Being a rapper or a performer and being a criminal street gang member, are those two mutually exclusive? They're not mutually exclusive. So you could be both? You certainly could be. Right. You've talked about the types of activity that you've seen or that raised on Cleveland engaged in. Um, did this activity remain confined to strictly the Cleveland Avenue area of Atlanta? No, no, ma'am. Would you tell the jury a little bit about how people touched other parts of the county? So there were um Certainly other crimes that Rock Crew members were suspected of. One of them, um, actually two of the more notable ones that we investigated early on in our, our working of this gang, um, one was ATM theft. Objection. What's the basis, Mr. Sharp? Your Honor, under Section 4. Uh, okay, I got it. I'm gonna, I got it. I'm going to overrule your objection, sir. Your Honor, this is other people not on trial. I would object to that. Your Honor, these are incidents that have formed these are personal experiences as well as experiences that Detective Belknap is Your Honor, I'm speaking objection. Um, I'm going to overrule the objection. You may continue. One of those crimes was ATM thefts. Uh, members were suspected and in some cases arrested and prosecuted for stealing ATM machines um, all around the metro Atlanta area. Um, some members were also engaged in armored car robberies. They were robbing um, the operators of armored cars in several places around the metro area. Um, their narcotics trafficking and, and sales were predominantly in the Cleveland Avenue corridor in that, that turf or that territory. Um, but some of their aggravated assaults, some of their shootings, and even some of their homicides were in other parts of the city. Was there a particular person who was known to be the head of uh, Rock Crew? Yeah, the, the leader, the, the head of uh, Rock Crew was Quentin Porter, who they called Big Boo. Now, did Rock Crew remain a single unit or a sort of singular gay or did it transition into something different? So we saw a change in um, Rock Crew around 2012 into 2013 um, away from using the name Rock Crew and we started seeing other things pop up in that area. Do you know or are you aware of what it was that happened before that? that precipitated that change or that we have contributed to it based on your experiences? There were, I would say, two of Based on confrontation clause in this testimony. Overruled. 
without telling, without speaking about words someone else said specifically, just generally the things that occurred. Okay, I'll do my best to, uh, to abide by that. Um, there were really, I would say, maybe three things that we observed that coincided with this change or this shift um, that appeared to have some influence on this change. Um, one was law enforcement attention on Rock Crew. Uh, they had been obviously responsible, as I've mentioned, for, for a number of high-profile crimes. And the Atlanta Police Department, along with federal partners, including the FBI and the U.S. Marshals, uh, had conducted multiple investigations that led to many arrests of, of Rock Crew members. And at that point, um, quite a number of them were in jail, and at the very least, um, what we were told in some of our interviews. Here's the anti-confession clause. Without getting into... Yeah, well, I'll, I'll sustain the objection as to... Um, as to that, you can rephrase it. Okay. Okay. Um... Law enforcement was paying a lot of attention to Rock Crew, leading to the arrest and uh, incarceration of many members. Um, another thing that occurred was this next piece. I don't know if I can say without it being. Okay. Let me ask you the question then. Okay. Um, did you all ever conduct any wiretaps that involved Rock Crew? We did. And during the uh, listening to and reviewing of those wiretaps, did you all observe or hear um, members of Rock Crew um, talking to one another? We did. Foundation. Would you tell the jury what it was? I sustain as to, I sustain as to form. As to, as to form. You can rephrase. Would you tell the jury what it was that led to you all having a wiretap on Rock Crew? In Overruled. In 2011, there was a uh, 30 deep gang member who was being prosecuted in a murder trial here in Fulton County. One of the witnesses in that case had an attempt. Mr. Steele? Mr. Steele? Mr. Steele? Yeah. Don't do that. You can approach.
Okay, the objection is overruled, and I note a continued objection for the record. <clears throat> It was. And who was the other member? Um, there were other members for sure involved in those conversations, but the target telephone was Timothy Thomas. Did you observe it uh, or overhear, uh, or did you all detect or identify or discover a telephone call between Quentin Porter and Truncavia Stevens? Not during the wiretap, no ma'am. Okay. At what point did you all learn of a conversation between Quentin Porter and that was during an investigation of a separate incident that coincided with and was picked up on our wiretap. Okay. During that time, did anything happen to Trontavious Stevens? Objection. Form and vagueness of the time. I'll rule the objection. Something or anything that you all found significant in terms of what happened with Rock Group and its members <clears> thereafter? <throat> So Mr. Stevens was suspected of committing an armed robbery um, on Cleveland Avenue of Javoris Crittenden, uh, who um, at the time was an NBA basketball player. And um, after that time, during our investigation, uh, Mr. Crittenden was accused and later convicted of shooting at Mr. Stevens and um, shooting and killing an innocent third party. Did the shooting occur in close temporal proximity with the call from Quentin Porter to Mr. Stevens? It, it did, to my knowledge, yes. Okay. What other events occurred during that time that coincided with the split or eventual change in the structure of Rock Group? Around this time on social media, there was also posted a um, picture. Your Honor, we're not talking about a statement, an out-of-court statement being offered for the truth of the matter, sir, if you're talking about an observation. I'll rule the objection. On social media. I'll rule the objection, Mr. Steele. Uh, a picture of a, of a page that uh, came from a discovery package from an Atlanta Police Department homicide investigation was published to social media. Um, in the picture that was posted to social media, um, the, the investigative summary stated that Mr. Porter had given the statement. Just to give this number of coach and objection. Bless you. Foundation. All right. That's your objection. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, as to what was in the report that was posted to social media, again, we are not offering it for any truth of the matter asserted. And we can actually get through this testimony without. All right. I'm going to overrule the objection. That was your objection. What was your objection, Mr. Harvey? I didn't deal with that, sir. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, the and I object to arguing these. We have come to the bench for the defense objection. I think we should come to the bench for the argument on our objection. Okay, since you made the objection, Mr. Harvey, come on up.
love I can't hear you. Okay, I sustain the objection. Detective Felton, now, without speaking specifically about the content of the report, um, were there members of Rock Group or were there persons who were sort of put on blast? Yes, ma'am. All right. And uh, in the gang culture, can you tell the jury uh, whether it is unusual or if it's often that things of that nature, homicide reports or investigative reports, parts of it are put up on social media. With increase, increasing frequency, yes, we are seeing that. And what is the purpose of that, generally, as it relates to the game? Objection to other person's speculation. Overruled. And go ahead. What is the purpose of that as it relates to gang culture and law enforcement investigations? Currently, what is probably our greatest challenge in investigating street gangs is witness tampering. And this activity has been a significant part of that where um, potential witnesses um, or victims that are cooperating with police can be outed on social media to a large number of people on a very short amount of time, thereby making it very difficult um, to get people to, to, uh, to testify, to uh, report crimes, and to be witnesses um, in crimes. What was it that you observed, or that law enforcement observed, as it relates to the structure of Rock Crew um, shortly after these events? <clears throat> well, essentially, Rock Crew, as we had seen it, um, nearly disappeared from Cleveland Avenue. We didn't see that name um, in use anymore, and we didn't see the same activity um, centered around that um, that set of identifiers happening on Cleveland Avenue. What was it that you saw in its place? Starting in uh, 2013 and, and going into mid-2013, we started getting reports, uh, you know, 911 calls um, for service from a variety of people in the Cleveland Avenue area from... This is a surrogate competition clause. Overruled, Mr. Steele. Overruled, sir. <clears throat> we received calls from several of the schools in the area as well as um, some parents in the area. and. Um, the general reporting. Your Honor, objection. This is exactly um, what we put violating the order. Yes, sir. Come up here, Mr. Short. Stop radio.
Detective Belknap, in what context did you start to hear? Did you start to, uh, did you learn of sort of an evolution from Rock Group? One of the earliest places we saw that was from re reporting of incidents within the community. Okay. And Hold on one second. If you have a device that is a camera with a shutter or anything else that is making noise, please put it on manner mode. I told you that yesterday. Or I'm going to have it removed. I'm so I apologize um, to all of you. Go ahead, sir. And what words were you hearing coming from these sources? They were reporting that the activity was related to a group called Slime Gang. Okay. And are these coming from um, adults, from schools, from middle age, from high school? Speculation, confrontation clause, hearsay. Um, I'm going to sustain it as to one of the bases form, and um, so you can rephrase that, okay? Yes, sir. Are these reports coming into the Atlanta Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And are they coming in through uh, civilians? Yes. Objection, speculation. Uh, not quite. And. Old. Right for now. And are they related to reports that call your attention to this slime? Are they related to adults? Or are they related to children or what? Basis. Going back to your border? Uh, no. How about a question? Well, that, the form of the question. Form of the question. I'll, I'll stay in as the form of the question. What is the age group? of the persons that these reports are related to. Uh, we were receiving reports. Hold on. I'm going to sustain the objections to form. Who had just objected? That was Mr. Steele. Um, let me ask a question, Ms. Um, well, why were you getting these calls, Detective Belknap? Um, we were getting these calls because citizens in, in the community were reporting criminal activity related to this slime gang. Where are these reports coming from the schools? Where were the reports coming from? Some of the nice to form. Yes, sir. So some of the some of the reports were coming from the local schools, from South Atlanta High School, Crawford Long Middle School. Other reports were coming from parents within the community um, reporting incidents involving their children. Thank you. Did APD's investigation, or did uh, APD begin investigating any particular groups as it related to those reports? We did. What was the group? What we began to discover was um, activity by a group calling themselves Young Slime Life. <clears throat> so, what are you able to tell the jury about the group called Young Slime Life? Through investigation, we discovered that the gang was formed uh, in late 2012. Um, we've identified over 100 members and associates um, as of the present time. They were uh, based in the same area as the previous rock crew, and in fact, what we discovered was many of the members now claiming to be YSL actually had previously claimed to be members of rock crew. Now, did this group called Young Slime Life, did it consist of three or more members? It did. Would you tell the jury whether or not there were any other indicators about this group that would qualify it as a criminal street gang? Question, Your Honor. Basis. It's beyond the Ken. It's not beyond the Ken. Excuse me for the jury. All right, overruled. I believe, we can, I believe we can advance the slide. We have a demonstrative. What we observed was that the group had a common name, which was Young Slime Life. Um, among the symbols that they used included wearing red bandanas, um, but also we saw the use of green bandanas. They used expressions like the word slat, um, which we discovered stood for slime life all the time. And they used that word slime in a variety, a variety of different ways. 
Uh, we saw people tattooing certain identifiers on their person, including the letters YSL, um, the phrase Slime Life, and also using uh, five point stars and red accents in some of those tattoos. Graffiti was, was similar identifiers, but seeing that tagged in the community. Um, their attire, again, um, using those gang flags or gang bandanas in red or green colors, um, and also custom clothing um, around the, the idea of slime. And we also saw them using other distinguishing characteristics, like using uh, snakes, um, lizards, um, including emojis of snakes on social media. Uh, some members refer to the group as Rudy Gang. That refers to a gang member um, who was shot and killed in 2016. Um, and his nickname was Rudy. And we also saw them using other blood gang identifiers, um, specifically often those associated with the sex money murder bloods. Were there any crimes that you observed or that were investigated that were committed by members of Young Slime Life and furtherance of the group itself? Yes, ma'am. Would you talk to the jury a little bit about those types of crimes and the types of crimes that were investigated? Your Honor, I same objection as to irrelevant to Mr. Williams and that were All right. Dan, I'm on one of the objections. You may talk about it. So as we've discussed already, um, and what we saw as continuing activity was um, predominantly narcotic sales in the Cleveland Avenue area, um, the narcotic sales and distribution. We also saw armed robberies, we saw shootings, we've seen murders, um, auto thefts, burglaries. Um, we did see some ATM thefts and other things of that nature. Now, were there any other groups that you found to be associated with as Rock Crew had an association with 30 Deep, we found that YSL also had an association with 30 Deep. And were there any rival groups of YSL? Well, they were not initially uh, rivals. During the course of our investigation, we discovered a rivalry between um, Young Slime Life and the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods. There are three sets, three gangs in Atlanta that are associated with the Inglewood Family Gangster Blood specifically. Um, those are ABG, um, which is Atlanta Blood Gang or Anybody Get It, um, the Haiti Gang, and also uh, Bird Gang. Are you familiar with the record label called Young Stoner Life? I am. Is that the same entity that you are referring to when you say Young Slime Life? Um, no, it's not. Would you tell the jury the distinction, please? <clears throat> so Young Stoner Life is a Georgia corporation um, that was, I believe, incorporated in July of 2014 as a music publishing arm. Um, when I refer to YSL, what I'm referring to is Young Slime Life, the, the game that we investigated um, for these activities that we've discussed. Now, let me talk a little bit about um, artists, music artists. Uh, in the city of Atlanta and Fulton County. Are you familiar with Jeffrey Williams? I am. Is he the only artist or musical artist in Fulton County? No, ma'am. Now, are there other artists that in their music talk about illegal gun sales or illegal drugs or anything like that that the Atlanta Police Department is aware of? <laughs> I sustain objection. You can you can rephrase or lay more foundation. Has the Atlanta Police Department ever investigated anyone because of something that they wrote, music wise? This is inappropriate. I object to relevance. I'm over the objection. Um, I, I don't honestly feel like I can speak for the police department in its history. Uh, Let me just in talk that about you question. On that. Okay. All right. So, as it relates to a musical artist's words, um, is there any crime in saying words? Um, there are certainly potentially crimes in, in spoken words. All right. Now, I'm not talking about crimes being described in words. I'm speaking of, is, there, is it a crime to speak the words? Um, as, a, as a generality, no. Um, outside of... That yes. Was the answer to the question. And so you're, you're, it's non-responsive. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, I sustain this in non-responsive. Okay. Have you ever sought to arrest anyone for speaking words? 
and a song? Um, no, ma'am. When you talk about young slime life and young stoner life, uh, did you or have there been any correlations between those two entities? Well, um, to the extent that I, I'm not sure I understand your question. Okay. Does the Atlanta Police Department and you as a gang investigator um, consider young stoner life to be the same as young slime life? Yes, and answer. I'll hold the objection. Um, through the course of our investigation, we did not view those two entities as being the same. No. Next slide. 